welcome to a special edition of Why So Serious. It's uh, nearly the end of August, so we figured now was the perfect time to do our uh, three-fifths of the year best so far show. We were a little bit late for the um, half-year roundup, and also we wanted to include all of the summer blockbusters. Um, we'd like to welcome Brian Lloyd, our new editor-director for Why So Serious. He's Caroline. behind the camera now. Hi. <laughs> Looking really good with his hair. Look at his hair. Poof. Yeah, that's amazing. He just have amazing hair, people. Yeah. You'll see it <laughs> in the future. But this is about film right now. It's not about hair. Um, so Your hair looks good. It does. Hmm. I have a... Uh, list of awards, awards uh, to give out. We don't actually have like stuff to give. After they've got their award from us, would like some sort of memento, they can come drinking with us. That's absolutely no problem. You just look us up and we'll go on the beer with you. Well, some of you, some, some, some I don't want. Yeah, well, that's around true. Here. Uh, so, first off the bat, most disappointing. Mm. If you talk to some people, there is like, the Dark Knight Rises maybe, they were wrong, the but whatever. Brogan and I are in agreement that the most disappointing movie of the year so far is... Prometheus. It was very disappointing. It was very disappointing. I remember walking into the pressure of this one, and the journalist, who I shall not name, because he might be embarrassed, was sitting behind me, and he was so excited that I thought he was actually going to puke with excitement. But his excitement was wasted. Prometheus had some great moments, as you will know if you watched our um, review of it. But it also had some really, really disappointing plot holy moments. Of all the films this year so far, it's probably the film that people have discussed mm. the most. Mm -hmm. Just talked about it. So in that way, it's kind of interesting. It's an interesting mess. Yeah, a hot mess. Yeah. Hot mess. So that's, that's most disappointing. Mm. Uh, most surprisingly good. <clears throat> what did you have? Um, ra, ra. Rat with the Titans. Yeah, and yours was how I spent my summer vacation. Oh, okay. yeah. That was pretty good. <clears throat> I've never seen it. I was surprised. Funnily enough. He's recording. <laughs> <laughs> my most surprisingly good film was uh, Wrath of the Titans. Really epic. And Sam Worthington wasn't quite as annoying, and uh, Rosamund Pike was much harder than whoever the last one was. Mm. And the special effects were way Gemma better. The special effects were way better, and the 3D was better. Ish. Yeah, and no, the bad the, guys were like huge. That dream sequence wrecked the place. Yeah, that dream sequence with the, with the hand. Yeah, that was awesome. That was pretty good. That I want, I, yeah, I yeah. want to see that yeah. again. Yeah. So that was mine. Uh, my most surprisingly good was how I spent my summer vacation, and I was surprised about this one because I in haven't seen it. Fairness, Mel Gibson has not been doing himself any favours lately. For him to come back and make a film that's funny and silly and completely over the top while engaging you with the character, I was really pleasantly surprised for that one. So that's my most surprisingly good. I'm gonna watch that, I think. I think you should. Maybe I will. Yeah. Maybe you should too. I think you should. Next up is the film that everyone else loved, that you hated, that I hated. My choice for this one was Wild Bill. Um, everybody loved this one because it was shameless ass. I didn't think it was anything that anybody hadn't seen before, except maybe Andy Serkis playing a gangster, which, you know, maybe okay, we hadn't seen that before. But, you know, it was a it was a decent first film from Dexter Fletcher, but I just thought it was really unoriginal. So it was a film that everyone else loved. I was not impressed by. What was your story? Mine. Uh, that I disagree with, that everyone else loved and I, in fact, did not love at all, was uh, A Dangerous Method. I disagree with this one. <laughs> I loved A Dangerous Method. But I'm going to let Rory talk, because it's his award. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, David Cronenberg, who's, like, really famous for directing, like, sexy violence, and he's now directing a film about Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, two of the, like, forefront runners of psychology, and you think it's going to be sexy, and Kieran Knightley, like, falls in love with them both, and you're like, oh, it's going to be sexy, and it's so boring. <laughs> they just write letters to each other for fucking two hours. <laughs> and then he's on a boat for ages. Oh my god, nobody even has sex probably. Next up is the film that everyone else hated that you loved. Mine is you slightly, loved. yeah, that, uh, that I loved. Mm. Rory's you not included it. in this one. You hate it. I quite liked it. Um, mine is slightly shameful in that it's Battleship. Um, and I liked this one because it was so stupid and so ridiculous. I got dizzy from Checkmate so much. <laughs> See, that's, you know, that's why it's the film that I 
liked, I'm changing the category here, the film that I liked but everyone else hated. Goon. Uh, Sean Willis Scott is an ice hockey player and he's like really violent but he's actually like a cuddly teddy bear inside and he like falls in love with this girl and it's not very plot heavy but it is very funny and he's very good in it and it's a nice film and it's completely harmless but for some reason it got slated. Yeah, Sean William Scott was sweet in it but it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be in my opinion and that's why it is the film that everyone else hated but Rory liked. Mm. Yeah. The next one is Best Superhero Movie, which could be, uh, you know, controversial. Mm. Um, Especially seeing as it's been quite a good year for superhero movies. It has to go to Avengers Assemble, I'm afraid. It really does. Really does. Uh, it was just, like, you could argue it's not as good a film as The Dark Knight Rises, but it is way more fun. Yeah. It, Written by Joss Whedon, directed by Joss Whedon brought him out of obscurity, well, apart from, you know, those of us who love Buffy and Firefly and Serenity and all those things. <laughs> but uh, he brought together all the Marvel superheroes really well and didn't give Iron Man prominence, which a lot of us were afraid of. He actually let each character shine and have their own little moment in it, and they worked well as an ensemble, they worked well separately, and I just loved it. And he's doing, he's doing part two. It's been confirmed. Right, next up is saddest movie so far. The one that you bring tissues into the cinema with, or if you're renting it, on, you're not that kind. <laughs> saddest. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you want to should we say that again then? No, I don't. I think it's a perfect way to it. <laughs> there actually hasn't been that many WAF fests this year no. so far, but mine is uh, Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. And look, right here, where you can't swallow. You like. Mm, so you don't cry? <laughs> no. I can't talk about it. No. My saddest film of the year so far is We Bought a Zoo. And it's quite sweet and funny all the way through, but just at the end, Cameron Crowe just throws a song on the soundtrack and you are kind of welling up. And then the very last scene is a bit silly. So I'm completely fine. Man. I'm completely and utterly fragile and falling apart. So yeah. Saddest films of the year so far. Great. Do you want to hug after talking about that? Are you sad? Best film nobody went to see. Mm. Uh, we both agree on this one. Yes. A rare agreement. <laughs> and it's uh, Margin Call. Even though it was Oscar nominated, none of y'all went to see it. Nobody. What's wrong with you? I don't think it's even out on DVD yet. Isn't it? Because there's no demand for it mm. over here. But uh, it's like great cast. Kevin Spacey and Zachary Quinto and Demi Moore and... Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons and like four or five other people who are also very good. And it, you'd think it'd be boring, but it's actually very tense mm. and it's, it has a whole kind of um, all the president's men vibe about it. It's all yeah. like, ooh, what's gonna happen? We to discover stuff. Even though you know what's gonna happen. Yeah. You don't know what's gonna happen in this little small section of the story. And every, every actor in it is brilliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you haven't seen it, which I'm sure you haven't, <laughs> um, do. Do, yeah, definitely. It was Oscar nominated for a reason. <laughs> Because it was good. Excuse me. So, who do you think is having the best year so far? Having the best year so far award? Having the best year so far, it would have to go to Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. He's shirtless most of the time, but still having a great year. The award we give him would just be like a torso right here. Yeah, bronzed. Like, yeah. Torso. Well done, Matthew McConaughey. Killer Joe. Killer Best Ma part of Magic Mike. Killer Mike, I nearly said. Best part of Killer Joe as well, actually. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's only so far. And I think like they're two of the better performances I've seen this year as well. Yeah. Like, of everyone. Yeah. And especially since it's Matthew McConaughey. Who's known for making really trashy, awful rom-coms. Mm. So yeah, in Killer Joe, uh, Matthew McConaughey is scary and completely unhinged and terrifying. And in Magic Mike, he's just... Scary and completely unhinged and terrifying. The last of the last award. Who is having the worst year this so far? This is the award you do not want. No, you're, you're someone I don't want to come over here to have drinks with us. Yeah, really, just stay right here. You just ruined my night out, like you've ruined all the films you've been in. Yeah, and that person is? Taylor Kitsch. What are you doing, Taylor Kitsch? I mean, seriously, John Carter, Battleship, ugh. Savages isn't out here yet, but it's out in America, and you, you are not being received well. No. 
No. no. Just because he was good in Friday Night Lights playing himself does not mean that he's going to be good in movies playing, you know, a character. <laughs> You're right in the middle of this Venn diagram of crap. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Taylor Kitsch, choose your project better or... Change your agent. Yeah, or, you Get know, learn to act. The very last award, actually. Surprise award. <gasps> Surprise award? What do you think this year's, uh, so far, best uh, film-based webcast is? Hmm. <laughs> film-based Irish webcast, I think, is... is uh, even internationally, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to... What do you narrow, think it is, Brian? Narrow the gamut. I think it's Why So Serious, Brian. No way! Yes. I heard. Uh, it's also topless. Also. <laughs> Yay! It's exactly what you wanted. Yay! <laughs> cool. Well, I've been Rory Cashin. And I have been Brogan Hayes. And that's been Brian. Brian! Brian Lloyd! <laughs> uh, and this has been Why So Serious, the three fifths best so far year 2012. Catchy award. title. Really catchy. Yeah. We thought about it for ages. Don't know, let's be Yay!